Hello Mishpacha, it's Courtney, America's Jewish Mother. Welcome back to my channel and I'm here today with a mid-month wrap-up and currently reading video. Um, so thus far in the month of June I have finished six books and I emphasize finished because three of these were carryovers from previous months. Um, so, you know, it's not that exciting that I finished six books in, in the first two weeks. Um, so the first book I finished was a book that I read for the BookTube Prize, which is American Baby by Gabrielle Glazer. Now, if you follow the BookTube Prize, you know that I can't talk about this book. Um, I have already recorded my thoughts and reaction rating to it elsewhere in a vlog that will go up after the semifinal, semifinals round has completed. Um, and after the finals round is underway at the beginning of August. So can't say anything more about this except that I finished it. <laughs> um, so I also finished in the month of June uh, The Body's Question by Tracy K. Smith. This is a poetry collection. Tracy K. Smith is a contemporary African-American poet. A few years ago, she was the Poet Laureate of the United States. Um, I've read some other stuff by her, including, I think, her volume Life on Mars, um, which is kind of more Afrofuturist. Um, this particular volume was her debut poetry collection. It was published in 2003, um, and as implied by the title of the volume, it does center on the body and specific bodily needs like hunger, thirst, sexual desire, things of that sort. Um, I liked it overall. Uh, some of the poems didn't feel quite finished to me. I did like um, a number of the poems in here, but even though I could sort of see the through line, not all of them quite worked for me, so I ended up giving this three and a half stars. Um, would still recommend it if you like contemporary poetry. Um, this one wasn't quite as experimental as I as I tend to like my contemporary poetry. Um, and normally when I review a poetry volume, I would pick a poem out of here that I feel like is representative and, and read it to you, just to give you a taste of it to see if you like it or not. Um, but I, I really just couldn't decide on a poem from here that I felt like was a good representative of the whole collection, also one that was short enough to, to read to you in, you know, a minute or less. Um, so anyway, I, I would still recommend it, but not my favorite Tracy K. Smith that I've read, but I sort of could see how she eventually uh, goes more in an Afrofuturist direction with her work. Um, I also finished another volume of poetry, which was Felon by Reginald Dwayne Betts. I think I heard about this on Melissa at Fully Books channel. Um, so I quite like this one overall. I gave this four stars. Um, again, as implied by the title, it is about the experience of being a felon. So both in prison and after prison. Um, and yeah, and pretty much all the poems center on that. I found it readable. It is sort of more experimental, like I tend to like with my contemporary poetry. Um, my favorite poems from this volume, hands down, were there are, I think, four of them um, that are all called In Something. So there's In Houston, In Alabama, In Missouri, In California. And all of those are found poems. So they present an actual. Um, actual court documents from which uh, Reginald Duane Betts constructs a found poem. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna read you an example of this. So this is this is the in California one. So as you can see um, it, there's a, because it's found poetry, there's a lot of strikethroughs um, of, of the actual wording, and I really liked all of these poems because I feel like they reveal the legal system for what it is and for its biases and blind spots with respect to justice. So this one is in California. In the state of California, in re petition for writ of habeas corpus, Arrested, a 63-year-old man, a retired shipyard laborer, a lifelong resident, arrested, charged, first-degree residential robbery, first-degree residential burglary, inflicting injury on elder theft, not a capital offense, no threat of great bodily harm, defense requested release, 
Humphrey's advanced age, lifelong resident of San Francisco, shipyard laborer, lack of a recent criminal. Prosecutor requested $600,000 money bail, a criminal protective order. The judge denied release, set bail $600,000. The court emphasized public safety $600,000. Humphrey did not have money to pay. Humphrey argued bail beyond his means violated the 14th Amendment, the 14th Amendments, the 8th Amendments. Prosecution argued public safety, flight risk concerns. Prosecutor requested detention. Court denied Humphrey's request. Humphrey presented acceptance letter, Golden Gate for seniors, asked to be released to Golden Gate, emphasize advanced age, treatment for battle with addiction, too poor to pay the cash. Petitioner asks a writ of habeas corpus be issued, ordering released an expedited hearing. The court inquire into ability to pay, release, not to detain him, release, release. Um, so if you liked that, I suspect that you will like the other poems contained in this volume. I would definitely recommend it if you are interested in, again, sort of more experimental contemporary poetry, um, poetry by contemporary African-American writers, or if you have an interest in uh, car carceral studies, um, so the, the study of, of people who have been imprisoned or are currently imprisoned. Um, so yeah, really good, four stars, would recommend it. Um, I also finished an audiobook. <laughs> I almost said ebook because I switched to the ebook at the end, but I finished an audiobook that I started last month for my Asian American project, which was um, The Making of Asian America History by Erica Lee. Um, and I listened to, like I said, the majority of this on audiobook, but then toward the end, I'm not sure why I decided to do this, but toward the end, I decided I would switch to the ebook. And I'm actually really glad I did that because there were pictures! And of course, when I was listening to the audiobook, I had no idea there were pictures, right? But I did feel like the pictures kind of enhanced my reading experience, so I personally would recommend reading this in either the print book or the ebook so you can have the pictures. Um, the other reason why is that I found it to be kind of dry and textbook-like throughout my listening to it. It was very informative. It definitely, you know, starts way, way back in history and, you know, kind of continues up through um, 20th and 21st century history of Asians in the United States. And also not just um, the United States, but there's also some talk of Asians in Canada and Mexico as well. Um, but yeah, I did, I did find a lot of it to be dry and textbook-like, but I'm not sure whether that's because it actually was. Um, and if I would have felt the same way reading the print version the whole way through, or whether it was just because of the way that it was narrated. Um, but it was very information heavy and dense, so I kind of suspect I would have felt the same way about it. Um, but I, I did like it overall. Um, I gave it three and a half stars. I would still recommend it, certainly, if you're interested in the topic of Asian America, right, or the history of, of how Asians came to be in this part of the world and kind of the struggles that they have faced and continue to face. Um, there was a postscript or epilogue at the end that specifically addressed the shooting in 2021 of six, I think, Asian American women in Atlanta. Um, and I thought that was a great addition. I don't know if that would have been included in the audiobook or not, but I thought it was a great addition because it really underscored uh, Erica Lee's point about how discrimination against Asian Americans has always been part of the United States identity. Um, and again, I thought that that, that discussion of a, of a still fairly recent event that happened really kind of uh, underscored that overall point. Um, I will also say that, and perhaps this is just my own personal bias because of my uh, my research interests, um, but I, I really was sort of more interested in the stuff that was happening in the, the 20th century and into the 21st century more than I was, you know, stuff that was going on in the, um, you know, 17 and, and 1800s um, and even before that. <laughs> Um, so I will, I will admit to sort of bias on, on that front, but, uh, but yeah, again, overall I liked it. I found it very informative. I think if you don't mind a history that's a little dry, you'd probably get a lot out of it. I think it's also a good addition to an anti-racism reading list because of 
again, this sort of thesis that Erica Lee has as a through line, which is that discrimination against Asian Americans has kind of always been part and parcel of American culture. Um, so yeah, not bad. Would recommend it if you're interested in the topic, but it's kind of dry and textbook like, so three and a half stars. And again, ebook or the print version, so you can see the pictures. Um, so I also finished, um, and this was another carryover, The Public Burning by Robert Coover. This was a buddy read that I did with Mark Nash and Cena of Beating Around the Books. Um, so this book centers on the execution of Julius and Ethel Rosenberg, so the last few days of their life, um, and, and then the actual date of the execution, which was June 19th, 1953. Um, and this has a large cast of characters, um, including a, you know, an anthropomorphized version of Uncle Sam, who, you know, talks like a cowboy, and, um, yeah, it's just very sort of like good old boy-esque. Um, and then it also has as a narrator Richard Nixon, who at the time of the Rosenbergs' execution is the Vice President of the United States. Um, and so you see some of Nixon's interior life and what he's thinking about and how he sees himself in relation to other people, um, and especially in relation to Ethel Rosenberg even more than uh, Julius. So. Um, this was a tough read, mainly because there's a lot going on, and also because it just seems like Robert Coover is, as Mark said at one point in our in our discussion of this, that Robert Coover is a maximalist writer. Uh, he just kind of throws everything to the wall to see what will stick. Um, and I did find that there were moments of insight in this. Um, but it just didn't, it t didn't totally work for me for a couple of reasons. Uh, if you follow my channel for very long, you know I kind of have these criteria that a book has to accomplish for me to, you know, kind of set, you know, give it my, give it my recommendation or whatever, right? So it, it has to have at least one of the following three things and preferably two or more, right? So it has to have um, some kind of character development or character arc. Uh, you know, a, a plot that's engaging and or nice writing. Um, and the plot here was not very engaging because this book was published in 1977, so both when it was published and, you know, obviously now, we know that the Rosenbergs were executed. So it's not like, you know, the I was hanging on to be like, oh, are they going to be executed or not? Like, yeah, of course they're going to be executed. <laughs> you know, like, that's what historically happened. Um, and then as far as character development goes, we don't really get too much of that because there's such a wide cast of characters and then the person that we probably spend the most time with, who is Richard Nixon, is kind of just a caricature of a person. I mean, he does have some interiority um, and, you know, he has more dimensions than just uh, political machinations, although those are most of them. <laughs> so, um, so I just felt there wasn't much uh, in terms of character development and then nice writing is sort of, of debatable. Um, as well, so I felt like this had a lot of potential, but it disappointed me, so I ended up giving it two and a half stars. I was grateful that I buddy read it with Cena and Mark, though, because, again, when you buddy read with someone, they tend to notice or point out things that you wouldn't have necessarily um, noticed yourself, so I, I appreciated that aspect of it. And then the last book uh, that I finished uh, just today was The Island Within by Ludwig Lewison, and this is a book that I was supposed to read for the booktube spin <laughs> several months back, but I, I just finally finished it today. Um, so this is a book that is about, it was published in 19, 1928, and it is mainly about this man named Arthur Levy, who is the first generation Jewish American um, child of two German immigrants to the United States. And it's kind of about how he navigates the world and his Jewish American identity and how he reconciles that in this very waspy environment that he inhabits. Um, and yeah, I mean, and, and that's, and that's basically the, the main, the main point of the book. Um, it is divided into nine parts. Each of the nine parts has a little mini essay that starts it off, which I found sort of interrupted the narrative flow for me. Um, and I think this is a book where the author had a lot of ideas that he wanted to convey, and he kind of used the book 
to convey those ideas more than he let the ideas arise organically from the actual characters and environment that he created, if that makes sense. Um, and so it's definitely a book in which you can see the author working very hard to make sure these ideas that he has come across. So, um, so for that reason, I felt like sort of the character work was weak. Um, the plot, while things happen in the plot, was ultimately not that interesting because I didn't feel like it was moved by the character so much as it was moved by the author himself. Um, and he did occasionally, like with the Robert Coover book, have moments of insight, um, but they were few and far between enough that I, I was not particularly compelled by the writing either. So I also gave this book two and a half stars because it had some potential, but it ultimately kind of disappointed me. Um, so that's everything I've finished reading in the month of June thus far. Uh, as far as currently reading goes, I am now working on a uh, another book for the BookTube Prize, which is George Saunders' A Swim in a Pond in the Rain. I'm reading this as an ebook. I'm also listening on audiobook to The Hair with Amber Eyes by Edmund DeWall, uh, which is for a, a book club that I'm going to, a, a, a Zoom book club that I'm going to do later this week. Um, so I'm maybe about a third or more of the way through that now. That's nonfiction. It's about these Japanese netsuki, which are little miniature sculpt sculptures, um, and who had a lot of them during what time periods and how France was super into things that came from Japan for a while. And so these were, uh, you know, kind of a, a collectible item amongst rich and rich, rich and famous people with means. Um, and then the last book that I'm currently reading is Another Country by James Baldwin. This I'm doing as a buddy read with Mark Nash and Zena from Beating Around the Books and Roz of Scally Dandling about the books. Um, so we are about 130 pages into this right now. I'm very interested to see where it goes. Definitely a lot has happened so far. Um, Baldwin is a great writer and he does always does a great job at characterizing individuals so really enjoying this and looking forward to seeing where this book goes um so thank you for watching this if you have thoughts about any of these books i would love to hear that please feel free to let me know that down in the comments below let me know what you've been reading and enjoying in the month of june um again thank you for watching this i hope everyone is staying healthy and well i hope you're doing good reading whatever you're reading and until next time would it kill you to call your mother